Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. If you could stand with me at this time, open up with prayer, ask that the Lord would be here in our service this Wednesday evening, ask him to refill us, rejuvenate us for the rest of the week. Amen. If you'll join me in prayer. Lord God, we come before you, ask that your Holy Ghost would fall within this place, Lord, that you would just move in a mighty way throughout this service, Lord. Every single person that's here would feel your touch, Lord. Every single person that's watching online, Lord, we ask that you would just move and let your Holy Ghost have its way in this midweek service, Lord, as we pour out our praise to you, for you are the one who is worthy, and you are the only one who is worthy of all praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated if you so choose. Worship with us tonight.
asking for prayers for the family. We also want to remember our sister Bev Barnett. They announced Sunday evening that she um, did lose her sister. So let's remember her and their family with that loss. I want to pray for uh, Brother Bernie's sister. She was taken to the hospital. Ask, um, ask the Lord for a healing touch there. We want to lift up Sister Tasha. She passed out today from a procedure she had done at the dentist, and she fell and she hit her head pretty significantly. She went through some drywall, so they took her to the hospital. She does have a concussion, but other than that, is doing fine, but uh, lots of dizziness, nausea, uh, so let's pray for her. Um, we want to lift up Catherine, who is the niece of Sister Kim Lise. Uh, she is back in the hospital with an infection in her dialysis port. We want to remember Sister Janika. She lost her grandmother this weekend. She was supposed to sing tonight, and she texts. She is just really struggling with that loss, um, so she's just asking for the church's prayers. The funeral is this weekend, and she's just having a hard time, so let's lift her up and their family. We want to remember uh, Michelle Taylor, who's the grandma of Chelsea Line. She is going in to see if she is has cancer, so we want to make sure we lift up her name. Um, Sister Patty is recovering from surgery last week on her neck. And last but not least, uh, Maddie, um, is um, she is homesick and asking the church for prayers for her. Brother Tyler is also sick, so let's remember him. So we have a very long list. Yes, Sister Michelle. Sister Phyllis Ante was taken to hospice today, so let's pray for that family. And then Jeanette's husband diagnosed with uh, colon cancer and has decided to decline chemo treatment, so let's pray for him. Sister Jessie. Remember Samantha, and then remember families, absolutely. Sister Elsie. Chrissy. Chrissy has a liver problem looking at a transplant for her. This is the niece of Sister Elsie. Brother Lise. This is the Lisa's neighbor, Lisa, and her mother, Dee Dee, has lung cancer. So let's lift her up. Any other needs tonight? We have a special one spoken. Let's go ahead and signify that by raising of our hand. And let's bring all of our needs to the one we know is able. Lord God, we come before you tonight, ask that you would just move in a mighty way over every single situation, every name, Lord. We know, Lord, that you have all power in heaven and earth, Lord. That's why we call upon your name. We know because you've moved throughout this congregation, throughout our people, Lord, throughout our church, Lord. Time and time again, we have testimonies. So we're calling in on your name in faith, believing that you're going to do it again, Lord. We ask that you would just continue to move through this congregation throughout this service, Lord. Just pour out your spirit tonight as we give you the glory and praise of which you are so worthy, so honored, so deserving, Lord. We ask that you would just continue to move throughout this weekend in our services. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. 
We only got one thing going on bet- before Sunday, which is the end time life group meets tomorrow night at 630. If you have any questions, you can see Brother Doug or Sister Vonda about that. And that is it besides uh, service on Sunday, regular service at 10 a.m. and 6.30. Come on back and be with us then if the ushers would make their way. Our offering scripture comes from Leviticus 27.30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. It is the Lord's. He is given to us, so we want to give back what is due to him. Amen. If you'll join me in prayer over our offering. Lord God, we thank you for the Holy Ghost that we feel on this place. Ask that you would just continue to move, Lord. Bless this offering and allow it to multiply, Lord, so we can spread your gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
before we go into our last song, it's an older song. Um, we visited Florida, not last summer, the summer before, and, and saw my grandparents. And my uh, my grandma asked me to play, and she pulled out a hymn book, not a hymn book I'd ever seen, of course. And she's just, play all these songs, play all these songs. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll try my best. I didn't know half of them. I did know half of them, but didn't know the other half. And so my grandpa is just singing in tune, singing, and I'm trying to find his key. And um, I don't know if you've ever heard my grandpa sing, but that's a little difficult to find his key. Um, but we had a really good time, and we sang for about an hour. And, and unbeknownst to me, Rex was recording us this whole time. He was sitting behind me, and I pulled up a few of those videos this weekend. Ooh, sorry, I'm not trying to cry. Um, and this song that we're about to sing, uh, we were singing it. And it's just been on my mind, in the presence of Jehovah. Um, I've been really personally struggling for about the last year, and I know we all kind of have in different situations that I know about, and I know there's many more that I don't know about. Um, but we're going to sing the verses, which we don't sing a lot to this song, um, but the words are so powerful. I just want to encourage you, if you are struggling in the presence, if you could just call upon his name, no matter what you're doing or where you are, he will meet you there, and he can do it. Amen. So worship with us. If you need him tonight, use this song to just get in, that, um, in his presence, in his glory before we go into the word tonight and worship with us.
up our hands and praise Him tonight. Hallelujah, what a wonderful hope we have in Him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Turn your neighbor and tell him, say, I'm glad I have hope in Jesus. Yeah, hallelujah. Praise God. Well, amen. What a mighty God we serve. What a wonderful Savior. And I'm glad for the promises that we have in Him. Praise God. Yes. The weather was beautiful today. And uh, the yo yo effect, I think, has got the sickness rolling again. But uh, I'm glad that we're all here in the house of God this evening. Powerful God. First chapter of the book of Mark. We finished last week, and tonight we're going to carry on dealing with the compassion of our Lord. Amen. What a wonderful Savior He is. First chapter. Verses 40 to 42. If you're there, say amen. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, Wilt thou, or if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Basically, he was asking the Lord, said, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus moved with compassion. Everybody say compassion. Put out his hand and touched him and said to him, I will. Be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately, everybody say immediately, the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. Praise God. Immediately. Lord, if you will, if you're willing. And he said, hi, I am. And he touched him. And immediately. Lord God, we thank you once again. Your presence is in this place. Amen. As we lift up our hands and our hearts and we allow your word to have an impact in our souls. Maybe some of us are feeling in the doldrums, down, being down and out in the doldrums, Lord God, but you can lift us up tonight. Amen. With the promise of your word. And so, God, we're believing tonight as your anointing moves and you touch each and every one of us, Lord, that we'll leave different than we came tonight. And everybody say in Jesus' name. God bless you, you may be seated. Compassion. Some people have it, and some people don't. Come on, you know that's to be true, right? How many ever ran across those people that really don't have compassion? Well, it's truth. So let's look at what compassion is. Compassion basically is a deep awareness of the suffering of another coupled with the wish to relieve it. How many's ever ran? How many's had that kind of compassion moving through you where you see a need and then you as an individual have compassion on them and you want to do something to try to help them or to relieve what that is. It is having sympathy for another's suffering and wanting to do something about it. I don't like to see people in need and feel like I can't do something about it, right? I mean, I, in my 42 plus years, whatever it has, is that I've been in the ministry, um, I've always had a, some people say I've got too soft a heart because I, when I see a need, I, 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 I don't have to go to search too far in my mind and my heart to try to help somebody out. Amen. I just that's just the way that that just motivates me. That's what makes me operate. And so in this story tonight, we find where this man that had leprosy came to the Lord and and uh, and uh, was 
imploring him. Have you ever prayed before and you were just burdened and you were just crying out to God and you were just saying, Lord, I need your help. There's nothing I can do about this. Amen. I'm, I'm handicapped with this situation or all these things going on and in my life and sickness and, and, and you come before him, amen, knowing that he has the ability, amen, to speak a word or to touch you and then you will experience that healing touch, amen, or the answer that you need. This man had leprosy. Leprosy was not something that you, that you wanted to have in that day and time. Leprosy simply was a chronic infectious disease characterized by things like sores and scabs, and white shining spots beneath the skin. And when you looked at this disease, it begins with uh, specks on the eyelids and on the palms. Everybody looking at your eyelids and your palms. Amen. I did. I'm like, man, do I have any of that on me? Begins with specks on the eyelids and on the palms, gradually spreading throughout the body and uh, bleaching one's hair white wherever they appear, crusting the affected parts with white scales and causing terrible sores and swellings. And from the skin, the disease eats inward to the bones, effectively rotting the whole body. So because of the need to control the disease, the law in that day and time required the lepers that they would live outside of the city in things that were called leper camps. And you were not to have contact with them and they were not to have contact with you. He was required to have his outer garment rent as a sign of deep grief, to go bareheaded and to cover his beard with his mantle. He had to further warn passerbyers to keep away from him. He would, have to he would have to scream out or call out, unclean, unclean, to warn those folks. Nor could he speak to anyone or receive or return, or receive or return a salutation. Something as simply as, how are you doing today? How is your life going today? What's going on in your life today? Hey Amen. Are you, are you doing well today? Yes, sir. Thank you for asking. Hey Amen. A lot of times we don't think about how important it is to respond to people when they say, hey, how are you doing? Hey Amen. I was thinking about that the other day uh, when I said, uh, when you walk up to somebody and you say, how's your day going? And they, they say, it's going good. Hey Amen. But I like it when somebody says, it's going good. Thanks for asking. We don't know what people are going through, but this man was going through a lot because he was ostracized. He couldn't be around people, only people like him in the, in the, in the, in the leper's camp. Amen. But here somehow he's seen that Jesus was coming by and he was like, you know what? This is my chance. Amen. It's like the psalm they just say in the presence of Jehovah. Amen. When you get into the presence of God, you need to have the attitude, this is my chance. When the presence of the Lord is here, we need to have the attitude, he's here with compassion. Amen. And, and, and I need to have the attitude that I'm reaching out for him. I'm not going to let this time go by. And so Jesus was so humble that even that leper that came his way, amen, felt comfortable approaching him. Jesus sidelined all of the... Uh, uh, the uh, uh, warnings and he sidelined and got rid of and, and didn't pay attention to what everybody else thought. In fact, Jesus touched him. That was a no-no, let alone just acknowledging him. Amen. But he felt comfortable approaching the Lord. Now, now understand this. Remember, nobody could have any contact, remember, with a leper... Not even his own family. So if you had a son or a daughter or a husband or a wife or an uncle or an aunt or grandchild, whoever, if they had leprosy, you could not be in contact. Can you imagine how those folks felt? When they might have looked off in the distance and seen their husband, their wife, their son, their daughter, their family, 
and they could have no contact with them. However, the Bible says that the compassion of the Lord was so strong that not only did the Lord heal him, as I said a moment ago, he didn't just speak a word, he touched him. Amen. It is said that a human being needs eight meaningful touches a day. Eight. Everybody say eight. Amen. Yeah. My granddaughter gets all eight of them. And then when I see my other granddaughter and my grandson, I double up on them. Amen. But believe me, it does matter when you touch your husband, your wife, or your family, or whoever it is, or somebody, handshake, or whatever it might be, it mean, everybody say it means something. Amen. He touched him. Everybody say the Lord touched him. It is possible that this man possibly hadn't received a human touch for a long time because he could not. But as the story goes, the leper approached Jesus, amen, with the right attitude. He didn't come up and say, Lord, you've done it for everybody else. You've got to do it for me. He didn't come up with some kind of an attitude uh, that was uh, belly aching or crying or, or in the mully grubs and just kind of, eh, you know, whining around about something. No, he came with the right attitude. Lord, if you're willing, I know you can heal me. That's when the Lord had compassion on him. Went beyond his disease. It went beyond his circumstance. It came down to a heart issue. Amen. And understand this. Most people in this condition, amen, would probably be very bitter, very angry, very, have a very harsh attitude and because they knew that people were going to shun them. So why should I be kind? Why should I be, you know, have you know, any, any feelings for these people because I am a nothing to them. I am I'm a leper. And so the leper approached with the right attitude. Amen. Because you understand, if he's really who he says he is, amen, then he'll, he'll touch me. Right? You know, see, most people have this similar attitude when they come to God. You know, when you come to God, you know, that's why it's important that we do have a relationship with God every day. Because when you come to God, you need to nurture that relationship. And you need to talk to the Lord. And you need to call out on Him. Because a lot of times when you don't, when that moment comes, then you're bitter or you're angry because this happened or that happened or something else happened. And then we come more in a mode of demanding of God. But can I say this tonight? We're going to be very frustrated if all we're doing is being demanding of God. But when you have a relationship with God, then you understand that relationship goes far beyond everything else. Because I know if God touches me, He will. I know He can. But if God doesn't, then that's okay too. Why? Because I have a greater goal. I have something that I'm looking forward to. I have a promise that God has given me. I know, how many understand this tonight, that one day, amen, when the trump of God sounds and we rise up out of this, out of this life that we have, amen, and we meet those that have gone on before us and we meet them in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord, amen. What's going to happen? Amen. Our body are going to be changed. We're going to be like in His body. We're going to have a glorified body. Amen. That means no more pain, no more aches, no more heart problems, no more cancer, no more lung issues. Amen. No more joint problems, no more knee issues. Right? Amen. Because there's going to come a day, so I have hope, amen, that one of these days when it sounds, I'm going to be ready to go. Amen. And everything's going to change. Amen. If you believe that tonight, clap your hands and praise Him. Hallelujah. What a mighty God, what a mighty God, what a mighty God, what a mighty God. <clears throat> Amen. Let's look at Matthew, the 20th chapter. Amen. Amen. Now, in, in Matthew here, it records where, Amen, they went out of Jericho, a great multitude followed, and behold, two blind men sitting 
at the road when they heard Jesus passing by. They cried out, have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. Multitude warned them that they should be quiet, but they cried out all the more, saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. So Jesus stood still and called them and said, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want for me to do? What would you like? Amen. And once again, the Bible says that the Lord had compassion. I want to drive this home tonight. Compassion. Amen. Thank God for people like Brother and Sister Banks and those that help them. Amen. When they go to the Hope House or the, 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 the I'm drawing a blank here. I've got a senior moment. The ladies, what do they call that? The Hope House, okay. Hope House 1, Hope House 2. And other things. And the men, Brother, brother and Sister Singer. Well, she's not a man, but Brother, sister, brother Singer and then Sister uh, singer and, and those that come and help her from time to time. Amen. Uh, do the breakfast. We had eight from the Hope House. Uh, it was a great time. We were glad to have them. Uh, we hope they come back, right? Yeah. Amen. You see, folks, you never know what somebody's going through. You never know what's going on in their life. Sometimes we'll look at them down our nose and we'll think, ah, you know, I'm not going to waste my time because they don't have nothing to offer. When in reality, you don't know anything about them. You don't know their circumstance. You don't know their life. You don't know what's happened in their life that puts them in a situation like this. So why shouldn't we have compassion on them and let them feel like, hey, somebody does care about us? We don't know. I hope we all grow in that. I want to grow in that. Amen. I want to grow in that. I want to grow where that compassion just overtakes me. Amen. To where I can't look at anybody without, amen, having compassion on them. Praise God. I know sometimes we, we, we get beyond it. Those that work, uh, I, uh, Sister, Sister Danielle here, uh, and some of the other people in church that work in the medical field, amen, sometimes, Sister Danielle, you can get a little, uh, what's the word I want to use, not rigid in a sense of that, but, but you get used to it. Jaded, that's a good word, thank you. You get used to that because that's all you ever see. All you see is sick people. That's all in, in that profession. That's all you see is sick people. You know, our, our law enforcement officers, what do they see? What do they see? The underbelly of society. What I mean by that is simply that the people that are down and out trying and, and they, they, they think that, you know, stealing this or robbing that or whatever is their answer or their ticket. They're just trying to survive. But that's what they see and they become, they come jaded sometimes. Amen. I, 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 I told my, I don't know if this is on or not. I don't know whether I need to say it over the uh, internet or not. But I've told my son before, I said, don't ever become so jaded that you can't have, have compassion. But don't ever become so compassionate that you let your guard down. And I say that to you tonight. Be compassionate, but also be guarded. Because you can help people without letting them come in, you know, and, and end up something happens in your life that you don't want to happen. Amen. But understand, Jesus, Jesus looked and said, you know what, the leper, hey, I know. I'm not, this guy doesn't know what it is to be touched. For how long? He said, I will. The blind people, he said, yes, I'll touch you. Amen. Why? He first said I had, he had compassion on them. And he touched their eyes. Let me tell you something right now. Amen. I don't know what people do, but I love to be in the house of God and we're worshiping God and I feel the touch of His presence. That's what this is all about, folks. Let me encourage you tonight. Every service you come to, every prayer meeting you go into, amen, whatever it might be, you need to go with that intention. Amen. I'm coming to touch the Lord. I'm coming to have Him touch me. I'm coming to have Him touch somebody else. Amen. I'm going to be compassionate because He is compassionate. I'm going to be loving because He is loving. I'm going to reach out because He reaches out. Amen. Everybody turn to your neighbor and say, He had compassion on them. He had compassion. He had compassion on them. Amen. Amen. So I look at this. What, what, what can I learn? Lord, what can I learn? Say that with me. Lord, what can I learn? From the Lord. We understand the blind men were so desperate to gain his attention that, understand this, they didn't care what anybody else thought. You know, sometimes we come and we're so reserved. 
Right? We're reserved. We come, amen, and we're reserved. We're just like, you know, we don't really want to talk out loud. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to pray. But look, if you've got a real need, you're not going to care about what anybody else thinks. All you all you're, all you're care about is, is getting to the feet of the Lord. All you care about is getting his attention, right? Amen. That's what it's all about. And that's what they thought. I just need to get his attention. I don't care what anybody else thinks. I don't care if they're saying, shh, shh. Come on, don't, don't bother the Lord. Just pipe down right now. You see, I'm going to tell you something right now. That's why there wasn't a lot more miracles that could have happened. That's why a lot more people weren't touched. Is because they were interested in maybe going and seeing, well, what's he going to do now? Or what's he going to say now? They weren't worried. They, didn't, they, 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 they weren't worried about him touching them. No. And so when somebody was interrupting that, then they wanted them to be quiet. But they said, you know what? We can't afford to be quiet because in the next few moments, he's going to be out of reach of our sound. Somebody say, praise the Lord. The multitude, be quiet. They rebuke them. They rebuke them. Keep quiet. But they understood our moment. Everybody say, our moment is now. That's got to be our attitude. Our moment is now. Whether it's in your prayer meeting at your house or Tuesday night corporate prayer, or at church, or whatever, when that need is up, you need to say, my need is now. And I need to touch, amen, the hem of his garment. Or I need him to touch me. Whatever that might be, understand, amen. We learn there is a valuable lesson in understanding the power of perseverance. Determination. You see, Jesus heard these men that first... The first time, you know, sometimes you're going to pray a little bit. I say it every now and then. Other people have said it too. But sometimes we have this microwave mindset where we feel like that we can just sit down and we can pray, punch the buttons, and bing, there it is, and we got it. But can I submit to you tonight? I think it needs to be a relationship. There has to be a connectivity somewhere. Amen. Your, your, your spirit has to connect. Now, yes, I agree. When the presence of God gets moving, it can happen instantaneously. instantaneously. But we have to put ourselves in that place. Amen. And so they were crying out. He heard them. Amen. But he kept walking. Why? Amen. Could it be that he was trying to test the level of their desire? Could it be that maybe he was wanting to see how persistent that they were going to be? Let me say it again. Sometimes God does not answer our prayers in the time that you and I think he should. Right? Amen. And it may result in him testing our desire. I don't say this in a bad way, okay? Just understand me. If we don't get the answers, should, should we not look in the mirror and ask the simple question, are we, pray, are we talking to him? Am I communicating with him? Am I opening my mouth and speaking words like, I love you, Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, your love and kindness that you have so graciously shown to me. I thank you, Lord, amen, that I know you. I thank you, most of all, Lord, that you touch me. Amen. Have you ever entered into that time of thanksgiving unto the Lord and just kind of talking to him and just telling him how much you appreciate him, how much you honor him? Amen, because when you get into his presence, that's when he begins to work. 
Amen. It's about a song. We can sing a song and feel the goosebumps, but it's not just about singing a song and feel some goosebumps. It's about relationship because that's where people get frustrated is when nothing happens. Do you know that we can be in church almost all of our life and never really have what I would consider or most people consider a close relationship with God? And really, honestly, that's not the way any of us should operate. Amen. Because his compassion was so great to us that he reached us where we were at. And he brought us, amen, he, he put us, uh, took us out of the miry clay, as the song says, and planted our feet on the rock to stay, right? So really, honestly, no matter what's going on in our life, amen, we still need to have, amen, an atmosphere of thanksgiving and praise unto the King. That's who he is. What a wonderful Savior. And sometimes he may just be wanting to test us to see what we're made of. As they say, test or metal. Amen. Because sometimes you're going to have to really put the time in. Amen. Sometimes you're really going to have to, you know. And you know what? Also, sometimes you have to understand that when he doesn't answer, you don't walk away all mealy-mouthed and and say, man, I, I, I prayed for two hours. God didn't do nothing for me. You know, no, 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 no. No, what you do when you get done, say, Lord, if you do, you do. If you don't, you don't. You're still my Lord, my, my God, my King, and I worship you and I praise you. Amen, for the hope that I have. Amen, really. Amen. Well, we know what the story, how the story ends. We know. You know, because Jesus shows compassion and he touches them. And however, the real power of this story, I believe, is found in the last three words when it says, they followed him. That's what matters. And sometimes I, you, you might wonder, okay, they followed him. What a powerful thing. They followed him. And I began to think about that, and, and all of a sudden I wondered, I wonder how many times they told their testimony. I wonder how many times others that followed him said, hey, it, I'm telling you right now, I was there when those guys' eyes were open. I was there when they were healed. I was there when the leper was cleansed. I was there. I wonder. Amen. Don't ever keep your testimony bound up within. In the moment, it's exciting. But don't forget about it. One year, two years down the road. Every now and then, you just need to stop and just say, thank the Lord for what He done in your life. And then when, you, when that testimony can be effective in helping somebody else, amen, that might be walking the same path that you walked, you need to, amen, articulate that to them and let them know, look, I can tell you right now with assuredness, amen, it's not like I'm telling you and I haven't walked in your shoes. I'm telling you because I've been there. Amen, I'm telling you, this is what the Lord done for me. And I promise you, He can do it for you. Amen. If you believe that, clap your hands tonight. Hallelujah. So back in Matthew, the 15th chapter, verse 32, Jesus called His disciples to Him. And notice what He said. He said, I have compassion on the multitude. Because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And I don't want to send, here, can I say it in my vernacular? I don't want to send them home hungry. Lest they faint in the way. Three days. He recognized they stayed for three days. They haven't eaten anything. They were getting ready to send him home. And the Bible said he had compassion on them because he knew they were hungry. And he didn't want to send them on their way home hungry. Man, what about that? 
that's, that, that's folks, that's, you know, I know, I, I know I'm maybe unusual, but that's why I have a hard problem when somebody says, I'm hungry. Do you have a couple dollars? You have $3, you have five, whatever. I have a hard time thinking about their hunger. And somebody says, well, they're going to use it for drugs. I don't know that. I just know my intention was good when I gave them that few dollars to maybe get them something to eat. Good, bad, or ugly. I just have a hard time with that. You know? I know my, without going into detail, I know my dad struggled with that because he was raised early on as a, as a young teenager in the Depression, and they didn't know where their food was going to come or if they are going to have any food. You had four boys, you had four girls, plus grandpa and grandma, so there was ten mouths to feed that house. So I kind of understand, as I'm older and I look back now, what that meant to him when he, did, when he wanted to make sure there was food. And when people, I always say this to people, you know, about it, I'm, thinking, I'm like, you know, there's been times when my mom would cook so much, I'm thinking, there's only three of us. But you know what? I think in their mindset was, well, if anybody comes to visit, they'll be able to sit down at our table and they're going to be able to eat. Maybe that's what got a hold of me. Maybe it was the upbringing to where I just want to be prepared if somebody doesn't have any food, right? I, I don't want to be in that mindset where I have to deal with Matthew 25 or the questions that when I was in prison, you came and visited me not. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I needed clothes, you didn't clothe me. When I needed shoes, whatever. You did, you know, when, in other words, when I was going through all of this, you never paid attention. So you and I, as a body of Christ, now, you know, sometimes you may say, I can't do a, I can't do a lot on my own. No, but if we come together, and then you have people like Brother and Sister Banks and Remillard, whoever else gets involved in that, and all of a sudden we're able to do that. You know, not everybody does that kind of ministry, folks. Not everybody wants to do that. Amen. They might, they might help out a little bit, but really, honestly, it takes somebody with a vision, with a passion, amen, with something, with, with, with something in their brain operating different than flesh. So I want to say thank you all very much for doing that. <laughs> By the way, they said if anybody has an extra $500 to send their way, then you can do that. No, that's just a joke. That's a joke. Hey Amen. But understand, hey man, I'm running out of time. There are many more examples in the New Testament that you can read about that shows and articulates the compassion that the Lord had on humanity. Hey Amen. And so we, we understand that. We understand that. The power that he has. The power that Jesus has. So in other words, he had compassion, and then he backed it up with power. That's what we're going to talk about next week. He had compassion, but he backed it up with power. He had the authority to make things change by a touch or a spoken word. He could put new eyeballs in your head. He could make limbs grow. Withered hand. Remember the withered hand? I mean, there's power in all of that. Man, we see it. And it, and it came down to the church. And the church began to operate. Amen. In, those, in the areas of miracles, signs, and wonders. And you started seeing all that happen. Why? Because he said, well, greater things than these shall you do. Do we believe that? Do we believe that? Do we believe that we, as a child of God, amen, we, amen, who have, uh, have had the, 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 the Spirit of the Lord, uh, you receive that into our heart and our life, we've, we've been buried in His name, we've been forgiven of our, do we believe that Scripture when He said, greater things than these shall you do? It starts with relationship. And it starts with compassion. Because before you ever get to the power, you got to know the source. If 
you don't know the source, there's not going to be any power. Amen. And you and I, that's where we got to get to. Amen. Where we say, you know what? Oh, I, I know him. Amen. I know him because I know what he's done in my life. But I'm not going to let it stop here. I'm going to be the conduit. Amen. That where he has touched my life, it's going to go out. Amen. With that energy, with that same energy and that power. He had compassion on me. Amen. That's why now from sin I am set free. Oh, praise the Lord. He had compassion. That needs to be on our lips every day. Thank you, Lord, for having compassion on me. Amen. In fact, in closing tonight, why don't we just raise our hands, stand up together right now, and let's just raise our hands. And why don't we just have a little thank you, Lord, session right now before we're dismissed. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you. We honor you. We honor you for this opportunity, Lord. We thank you for the hope that we have in you. We thank you for your word. Amen. That truly is a lamp unto our feet. We thank you, Lord. Amen. For what you have done in our lives. And we're asking God, let us have that same kind of compassion. Lord, let us persevere. Let us, let, let us, let us fight through everything that would try to hinder us from being what you want us to be. Oh, God, speak to our hearts. Let us realize, amen, that we have authority in your name. Amen. We have authority in your name. When we speak your name, when we speak the name of Jesus, hallelujah, when we speak the name of Jesus, amen, when we speak your name, amen, things begin to happen. Oh, Lord Jesus, there's nobody like you. Hallelujah. Come on, once again, raise your hand. Just, just call out. Thank him again for it. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Why don't you take a neighbor's hand where it's appropriate tonight. Just take their hand and I want you to pray for them. Say, God, amen. Let this get on us. Let this.